All right, let us have uh, sexual follies. So I have to find my, uh, oh, I, this is, this is, I just love this story. I just love this story. Some, you know, we were talking about the Women's March. We started talking about the Women's March. And now some of the women are saying you can't wear the vagina hats because some women are men and don't have vaginas. And this is, this is of course, this in, in, incredibly cra- I mean, look, if you're a woman who thinks you're a man, that's a very painful situation. You're a man who thinks he's, he's a woman. That's a very painful situation. But it doesn't make you a woman. It doesn't make you a man. You're not. You're not. And even, I'm sorry, but even if you have an operation, God bless you. Do whatever you want. You know, live your, your best life. It's fine with me. But you are a woman when you grow up as a girl and you become a woman and you go through that experience. That's an experience. That is a lived experience that you have. It doesn't happen in your mind. It happens in your body and your mind and your soul. And so, so now they are, there are actually people who are claiming that if a man will not date a man who's, who says he's a woman, that he is, uh, what do they call it? Transphobic. Uh, they always have a good name for stuff. And this, there was this BBC uh, reality show called Celebrity Big Brother. And one of the uh, people on it uh, was talking to a former singer named Genuine. Uh, and Genuine turned down a kiss from fellow contestant India Willoughby, a TV journalist who had transitioned from male to female. Well, first of all, no, he didn't. He didn't. He's still a male. He may have had any operation in the world, and we can call him, find some name for that. But it, it is it is kind of comical. It is kind of comical to me that two years ago, five years ago, we were arguing about whether homosexuality was moral. And people like me were saying, listen, it doesn't hurt anybody. Live the life you're going to live. If that's the way you have sex, that's fine. And now we're being told that heterosexuality is essentially a form of bigotry. Heterosexuality, being attracted to the person you're attracted to, who happens to be women, is uh, is somehow an act of bigotry. The big thing about transgenderism is that it is a completely unimportant issue. It's an issue that was brought forward by a left that seeks to find ways to curtail what you can think and what you can say. That's all it's about. It's all it's about. We do, the, as a nation, we do not need to address the fact that some people are confused about their gender. As a nation, we can ignore it completely. Let me tell you something. You go down to City Hall in LA, there's a tent uh, town of homeless people, people sleeping out in the street. When I was in New York and it was 15 below zero, I mean, it was freezing cold. There were guys out in the street with their dogs, veterans wrapped up in pillows with little signs saying, I'm a vet. Here's my dog. Give me some money. That's a problem. That's a problem that we're all going to have to address. We're all, you know, left and right. We're all going to have to figure out a way to get people off the street. The fact that some people don't know what bathroom to use and are confused about their gender it just is not important. It is not an important issue. But it's all about it. It's all about constructing this world of silence, this cone of silence, so that only the feminist perspective can come out. Only that social pressure can be brought to bear. And it's women, especially, who suffer from this because men will break away. Guys like Owen Benjamin will break away. But women are wrapped in this cone of social norms that is created by uh, a massive, massive corporate machine. Uh, that includes the networks, that includes the late night comedy shows, that silent Twitter, Google, that silence any voice that rises up and speaks against them. They are out there doing this to get you and especially women there, especially after women. The conversation is coming up at 2.30 California time, 5.30 Eastern time. I will be with Alicia Krauss. Subscribe while you can and send the questions in. And if you don't get them into the conversation, send them into the mailbag, and I will try and answer them tomorrow on the mailbag portion of the show. I'm Andrew Claven. This is The Andrew Claven Show. We'll see you in a couple hours. The Andrew Claven Show is produced by Robert Sterling. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Senior producer, Jonathan Hay. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Edited by Alex Zingaro. Audio is mixed by Mike Cormina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Alvera. And our animations are by Cynthia Angulo and Jacob Jackson. The Andrew Claven Show is a Daily Wire forward publishing production. Copyright forward publishing 2018.